Hi, boys and girls. Hope you're having a wonderful day. Today we are going over central idea again. So let me go ahead and share my screen with you. All right, looking at here, what are we doing? Today we are identifying the central idea of a narrative nonfiction story, another one. We are view an anchor chart, identify how to find it within a story like we just did. Um, and why are we doing this? We're doing it because uh, knowing the central idea helps us better understand what we're reading and also we can support our answers. So remember, central idea, we have a topic, the central idea, and supporting evidence. There's three components to that, three things. So the topic is the person or thing that the text about. Yesterday, we talked about uh, Earth, and today we're going to actually talk about, oh, you'll see, I won't say it. Central idea is the big idea or main idea that readers should take away from reading the text. That means like what you should just get that it's mostly about. And supporting evidence is details in a text that help to explain the central idea. So we're not just finding random things that we remember from the story. We're finding those things that support our central idea. If our central is about, central idea is about alligator, I mean, it is about elephants. But in the book, they mentioned um, one kitty. Do you think that we're going to say, oh, there was a kitty in the book as a part of our evidence? No, we're going to find something that supports our central idea. It's not just random things. They have to support our central idea. Okay. All right. So let me go ahead and show you what we're reading today. Today is called Art All Around Us. We know the topic. What do you think our topic is going to be about? The text, the person, or the thing, mostly what the text is about. What do you think it's going to be about? Art Around Us. What do you think it's going to be about? about art, right? So our topic is most likely gonna be art. So now I want you to think about what you think this book is gonna be about. Think about it, say it out loud. Even if you, you're alone, whether you have students around you, say it out loud. What do you think we are going to learn in this book? Okie dokie. So let's look at the table of contents. It says introduction, painter, sculptor, potter, glassblower, fiber artist, unusual art, where art is found, and the glossary. Hmm, I think I already kind of know the central idea. Art all, or introduction, art all around us. Art is in every shape, size, and color. Artists can make art from anything. Some artists make art with paint or paper. Others use glass or clay. Some use a computer. Others make art out of plants or sand. Painter. Some artists are painters. Most painters use a brush. Others like to splash or spray paint. Some like to drip paint instead. It's all painting. So we see here a uh, illustration, we see a photograph, and we see a caption. So those are also text features, right? We're noticing, and this is a heading. It says, Alfred Quiroz painted this picture of himself. It is a self-portrait. This is an illustration and it says mural on a wall. Painters paint on many surfaces, most paint on canvas, some paint on dishes or furniture. Have you seen a painted mural before? A mural is big and it's painted right on a wall. We have one in Elgin, Texas. You see them all over Austin. Um, these are people who pretty much paint on the walls and of course they have permission to do this. So do not go painting on walls. A uh, sculptor. Sculptors carve shapes with sharp tools. They might carve wood, stone, or ice. Other artists make soft sculpture. Soft sculptures are made from basic, from fabric and yarn. And so here we have a photograph and it says wood sculptor. This is what he's doing. So, oh, and we have another photograph and it says metal statue made of bronze. Okay, so some sculptures shape metal. They pour hot metal into a mold and let it cool. And when they take the sculpture out, it's shaped like the mold. Potter. Potters make art with clay. They use their hands to shape the clay. Potters push on the clay. They pinch it, they pull it. They make it into the shape that they want. And it says here, forming clay pottery. They actually have these classes like around Austin where you can make your own pots and pans. I remember, I think 
I was in middle school when I made my first type of pottery. The, and then we have another photograph that says baking clay pottery. The clay shape is baked in a very hot oven. The heat bakes the clay until it's dry. Baked clay is called ceramic. Potters use a special ceramic plate paint called glaze. The glaze makes the ceramic shiny. Ooh, a glass blower. Melted glass is soft, like very thick glue, and a glass blower scoops up a blob of hot, soft glass with the end of a long metal pipe. The pipe is hollow, like a straw. The artist blows air through the pipe into the blob of glass. The air makes a bubble in the glass. Then the glass blower, blower can shape the bubble. He or she can make it wide like a bowl or make it flat like a plate. A glass blower shapes a ball of glass right here. So let's look at this photograph and it, there's another caption. It says, hot glass is soft and can be shaped in many ways. Glass blowers work very quickly while the glass is soft. They can change it. They can add dots or color. They can add a handle, but they have to be careful. When glass cools, it gets hard and it can break easily. Fiber artist. Art can be made with thread, yarn, and pieces of fabric. It's called fiber art. Some fiber artists sew. Some make a quilt for a bed. We look here we see these pictures and it says pattern quilts and dolls are popular forms of fiber art weavers and there's a photograph and it says weaving weaving loom Weave, weavers are also fiber artists weavers loop yarns together to make art they use a machine called a loom the loom helps them put the yarn in the right place Weavers can make beautiful rugs or blankets, and they can weave a soft sculpture to hang on a wall. Unusual art. Some art just looks different to us. It isn't a painting, it isn't a glass bowl, and it's hard to say what it is. Artists make things from things that they find. Maybe they use pieces of wood and old junk. They might use part of an old parts of old toys too. Some artists make big sculptures with sand. They get to work at the beach all day. And here's a picture of a piece of unusual art and it says, an artist made this funny face using a wooden cutting board, a circuit board, telephone bell, and a telephone keypad, industrial springs, and wire. Many artists like to work outside. They make art in a park or a garden. They use tree branches, rocks, and plants to make a design. People can come to the park to see it. And it, look right here is a photograph and a caption, and it says, many sand castles are true works of art. Uh, in college, we used to go every year to the Port Aransas Sand Castle Festival, and they had the craziest sand castles. One time I saw SpongeBob and Patrick made out of sand. An art installation is big. It can be a whole room that is a work of art. Sometimes you can walk around inside it. Ooh, this reminds me of the thinkery. Um, sometimes you can walk around inside it. The artist fills the room with things to look at, touch, and hear. The room might have flashing lights or big video screens. You might hear music or strange sounds. You might even smell flowers or popcorn. It says an installation uses a whole room to make art. Where art is found. Simple drawings are the oldest art in the world. Some very old drawings are on the walls of caves. Other old drawings were scratched onto rocks. The drawings tell stories about something that happened a long time ago. Art is also found in the ruins of very old cities. Scientists sometimes find old pottery designs. Some ruins have old murals painted on the walls. So here we have an ancient cave drawing and a Pueblo pot. Art is everywhere. Explore your town to find different find types of art. Visit an art museum, you will see many types of painting and sculpture. Go to an art gallery or an art fair. Artists want to want you to see and enjoy what they make. Right here is an art museum. It says top art museum, bottom is public art, comes in many shapes and sizes. And in Elgin, actually, if you know where the post office is, there's one, I think there's like an iguana on the wall. I'm not sure. But okay, so we read about art, right? We read about art. Is that what our topic is? Yes, our topic is, ah! 
Okay, our topic is art. What is our central idea? What is our central idea? What was that mostly about? We know it was the topic was art, but what did the author wanted you to take from it? Different kinds of what? Different kinds of art. Now here in what I want you to do right now is grab your journal. This is what you're doing again. Grab a journal or grab a piece of paper and write number one and number two. We have our topic and we have our central idea. We know that our topic is art. We know that our central idea is different kinds of art. Your job is to find two supporting details that support the different kinds of art. You can go back to the story. Look, we have this kind of art, this kind of art, this one, this one, this one, this one. We have a bunch of them. Go back to this video and pick which kind of art you want to write about in a detail about it. If you're going to write about pottery, tell me about pottery. If you're going to write about fiber art, then write about fiber, fiber art. Don't just say, don't just say this, fiber art. No, I want a complete sentence. Fiber art, what do they do? They, they use yarn, whatever it is. So you need to find two details from the book that support that this book is about different kinds of art, okay? I hope that you have a wonderful day. I will see you tomorrow. Bye.